jodimansedemun.com live from Aqaba this morning is uh, Thursday, I don't know what date it is, uh, 11th, I think it is, October 11th. I've been having trouble with my connection, I have to use a Wi-Fi to make the live videos and uh, otherwise I gotta do it on my phone and then take it back and upload it to YouTube and all this stuff so um, I don't know how to do this is what I'm trying to say. That's irrelevant. I'm trying to get this message out to y'all. Those of you who are watching or listening from Israel or you know friends who are in Israel, the Elat border to Aqaba is open. The rumors going around before I left were that all the borders were closed. The borders at the Allenby Bridge are closed. There were uh, protests in Amman, Jordan in support of the Palestinians, that's why the border is closed, to prevent anyone from coming in on the West Bank. But those of you that are trying to get out, your planes are being postponed one, two, three days down the road. That's putting you longer in danger. The stress level was getting to me. Uh, I stayed because I was looking for the abomination to be set up. But the day that we were looking for it was the day the invasion started. And the prophecy goes that when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, you are to flee. Did, were we looking at the wrong thing? Was it that abomination down at the, um, the tree hugger party, which was done on Shimni Atzeret? I don't know. In 2020, when we warned you about the uh, coming sword, it was sword, plague, and famine, but I focused on the sword. We got 2020 right, but we had the sword, we had the emphasis in the wrong place. I'm just a student of the Bible, the same as all of you. I don't know everything, but I'm learning, and I, but I learned through the Jubilee, the Sabbath and Jubilee cycles, how these things are about to take place. So. I want you to get the charts, go get the chart to free up my website, um, sedemoon.com, or go to Amazon. This is not a promo to sell my stuff. I'm trying to educate you, and I can't do it in a 30-minute video. So get the book, study them. We are very close in our understanding. We may not be perfect. That doesn't make me a false prophet. I'm not saying, thus says the Lord, never once. So I want you to understand those of you who are in Jerusalem, who are trying to get out, you're waiting for your plane, as long as the rockets keep landing in Tel Aviv or targeted at Tel Aviv from either the, the south, from Gaza, or from the north, from Lebanon, no planes are going to arrive. My Canadian government has said that they are going to send planes. They're working on it with their other people, their other nations there. They're not doing anything. This war is now on day six. Okay, you need to have a plan ready by day three. They're not doing anything. So, if you're waiting for the government to rescue you, you could be dead by the time that happens. If you're waiting for your plane to come in, it may never come in. Get your butt on a bus, bus 444, from Jerusalem, go to the, Grand, uh, the bus central station, Get on 444, buy your ticket there. Doing it online was very hard for me. It's all in Hebrew. They don't do it in English. Uh, go to the ticket booth there, buy your bus ticket there for the next bus. Sit there all day if you have to, but get on that bus, get down to a lot. When you get off the bus, flag a taxi, ask them to take you to the, the border. You go to the border, you pay your exit fee with uh, the Israelis, then you go to the Jordanian side and you sign a paper that if you're not there for more than a couple days, you're gonna pay 60 dinar. If you're there for three, four days, you pay 40 dinar. And if you're there for longer, you pay 10. I don't know what it is, it doesn't matter. Just sign the paper and get in here. There are different hotels here. I couldn't remember the one I stayed at. The one that I do remember is the Intercontinental. It's very expensive, but that's where I went. 
now my stress levels come down. The anxiousness of being the sirens, the anxiousness of the missiles landing, the anxiousness of the booms and the sonic booms over the head, the anxiousness of hearing the jets, the Israeli jets flying overhead constantly as they're attacking Gaza and patrolling the north, it wears on you. And you make decisions rationally, or not rationally, quickly and not rationally. And then there's this thing called the fog of war. You don't know what's truth. I am guilty of using a propaganda website for my information. It's called WW3Info. WW3Info. They were providing updates, but they're also pro-Hamas. They're also pro-Palestine. They're also anti-Israel. So I'm guilty. Be careful of who you use as your information source. I want to encourage you to get back to the Torah. Get back to the Torah and obey Jehovah. Stop with all your conspiracy crap. Stop with all your other religious crap. Stop with all your fake religion. This is real. There are real people that were just civilians, raped, kids beheaded, kids beaten into walls, and hostages taken and they're being raped. It's real. You need to get real. You need to get real with Jehovah because he's a real God. Everything else is a puff of air, a vanity, it's fake. And some of you have got to get your religion and become real with Jehovah. Talk to him like I'm talking to you. Oh, I got faith. It's going to get solved. It's going to get better. Blah, blah. No. Get real with Jehovah and get real with him now. What we've been telling you in the, the 2300 Days of Hell book is that hell was coming starting in 2020. Drought, which is what the sword means. Drought. Parse, uh, dryness is cut off, het resh pay. And that's been happening. The rivers around the world are drying up. Right now, the Amazon is drying up. Last year, 2022, every major river around the world was drying up. Het resh pay, haref. It's a sword. That's what the sword means, haref. But it also said that famine and plague was coming. And we got the plague in 2020. So we got that date right. We had the emphasis on the sword, not understanding that the sword meant drought and fam uh, drought and, and oh, drought, heat. And the weather continues to tell us that Jehovah is angry and attacking the world until we all bow down and obey him. That's what you have to do. Stop the bickering. Stop the infighting. Oh, he not, doesn't wear a kippah. Oh, he doesn't have a beard. Oh, he doesn't have the, the, the side curls. Oh, he's not wearing tzitzit. Oh, he is wearing tzitzit. Stop with the fighting. Everybody is back in Jerusalem now trying to figure out how to get out. Doesn't care what religion you are. They just want help. Stop with the fighting. You need to obey Jehovah. Bottom line. All this nitpicking about this other stuff, stop. Those of you with your own uh, theologies, stop. Being able to predict the future doesn't make you holier than anybody else. Being able to understand this back of the years doesn't make me holier than anybody else. When you see dead bodies on the street, when you see people that are being shot because they're people, Your future prognostications don't matter. Get real with Jehovah and get real with them today. Repent of all the crap you've been peddling to everybody else.
Yes, my stress levels have come down because I, I'm feeling safe, I'm not hearing sirens, and I'm in a peaceful, beautiful place here on the Red Sea. That's uh, Saudi Arabia over there on the other side, which you can't see, is Egypt, and I'm here in Aqaba. So I want you all to get real with Jehovah. Stop your fake stuff. Stop fighting. Stop accusing people of stuff. Get real. Ask Jehovah to forgive you for being an idiot. Okay, I'm sorry. If you don't like me saying the word, go find someone else to tell you what's going on here. But stop being stupid. The only way any of you are going to survive this, the only way any of you... Okay, you think this is only going on in Israel? This is where it's starting. This is going to spread around the world. Over the next 10 years, judgment is coming on the entire world. In 10 years' time, at the Day of Atonement in 2033, Satan will be locked up. Only then will it stop. So we need to get right with God. This war that's here is coming to where you are listening now. You heard me right. It's coming around the world. And if it's not war that's coming, then the plague is coming. If it's not the plague that's coming, then it's famine that's coming. If it's not that, then severe drought or extreme flood is coming. But it's coming. And you need to get right with God because that's the only way you're going to get out of this. It's the only way. You must obey Jehovah. You must keep the Sabbath. You must keep them holy. You can't be worshipping some Buddha statue and think that you're worshipping God. Not all roads lead to God. No, they don't. They all lead to hell. There's one road that goes to Jehovah. And that's through his Torah which you have now got to open and read. You've got to read it. Do not let your Torah be somebody talking to you on YouTube. That can help you understand things better, but it's not your Torah. You've got to read it yourself. I don't care what version you have. Open up your Bible, read it. I have friends who are staying in Israel. They've made the choice. They're going to stay. Pray for them. Pray that they're strong. Pray that their voice is heard. They don't need to pick up a gun. Pray that their voice is strong. Strong for Israel. Strong for Jehovah. To encourage the young men on the fighting line. To, to obey Jehovah. Be brave. Be like Joshua. Be brave. Don't be stupid. Don't be jumping out in front of bullets. Be brave. Obey Jehovah, and he will protect you, but you've got to obey. I'll be leaving Aqaba here probably tomorrow and heading uh, home via some direction I don't even know yet. So my message to you today is to obey God to stop with all your crap, to stop, to obey God. When you are taken hostage, when your house is being burned, when your bullets are going through your house, when there are invaders coming through your house, knowing prophecy doesn't matter. At that moment, knowing prophecy doesn't matter. Whether you had your keep it on or off, or zitzit it on or off, doesn't matter. What matters then is whether or not Jehovah is going to protect you, hide you, bring you through the fire, or not. That's all that matters. Will He keep you alive? And the only way that will happen over the next 10 years 
is if you obey him. Because he says in Ezekiel that everyone is going to be removed out of their houses. Every single person will be removed out of their houses. But the rebellious will not be brought back to the land. They're not going to be brought back. Where are you? Are you one of the rebellious ones? Nobody thinks they are. The only way to find out is if you read his word and if you ask him to show you his truths. Not Joe Dumont's truths, not anyone else's truths, his truths. There's only three places I recommend you listen to. Of course, setmoon.com. I try to do my best. I'm going to make mistakes. Nehemiah Gordon. Uh, the wall. Um, I forgot what his website's called. McCor Hebrew Foundation. Keith Johnson. Biblical, Biblical Foundations, uh, BFTI, I don't know, Keith Johnson, Michael Rood, but Michael Rood's starting to put too much conspiracy stuff on there for me. I don't recommend anybody else. I'm sorry. Anyone that wants to teach conspiracies, I don't recommend. But you all got to start being brave. You all got to start talking on behalf of Israel, talking on behalf of Jehovah. you got to speak up. We've been wondering, what is that trumpet sound that's going to go off in 2024? Now, some of the people were telling me that maybe 2024 starts after atonement, or starts after trumpets, or starts after the fall festivals. I don't know. Maybe, the, maybe this is it. Maybe this is that trumpet blast, that sound that's going to go around the world. Everyone's now heard about the war, the invasion, and the atrocities that were committed against Israel on Shabbat by Hamas. Horrific. And anyone that's protesting in favor of them, they're idiots. To kill babies because they're Jewish? To kill babies because they're on the other side is insane. You've got to become that voice for Jehovah. There's an innumerable multitude that's going to come out of the tribulation. This is not the tribulation. This is the beginning of the ten days of awe. Whether that beginning starts now or if it starts in Aviv 2024, I don't know. But this is the beginning of it. And it's going to spread around the world. You've got to become that voice for Jehovah. He called you to be a witness. He's called you and given you certain talents. Do not stick your talents in the ground. Do not bury your head in the sand. Raise your head up. Speak out. Be the voice. Tell people what's going on here. Tell people they got to obey Torah. Be the voice. You be the voice. And speak the truth. The world is going to need to hear the truth. They're going to be confused by the anti-propaganda people, which also deceived me here in this fog of war at the beginning. And I may get deceived again in the future. So please forgive me if I put up the wrong stuff. Follow me on Telegram if you want. I'm not done talking. I will continue to put out broadcasts. I will continue to update you uh, from wherever I am in the future. But I'm not going to be silent. I'm going to tell you, you've got to get back to Jehovah. You've got to start obeying Torah. I don't care who you are. I don't care how religious you think you are. And I don't care how New Testament you think you are. Paul did not say to do away with the law. Paul said, heaven forbid. You've got to obey the law. You're not going to be raptured out. Okay? If you think you're going to be raptured out, you don't know anything. You're going to be disappointed. Read my book, The Mystery of the Jewish Rapture, 2033. It's not a book promotion. Don't read it if you don't want to. I don't care. But if you want to understand, know that that rapture notion was written about by Moses. And Yeshua said, if you don't know Moses, you don't know me. And if you don't know me, then when he comes, he's going to tell you, I never knew 
you. So if you don't know Moses, you're not going to know Yeshua. And if you don't know Yeshua, you're part of the five stupid virgins who are going to be going, ah, we're going to have a connect problem. But I've had people just write me today who were skeptical, who were skeptical, who begin to read my books, they find my research amazing. Awesome. I hope you do too. Check my research. Check the things that I've researched for you. They're in PDFs on my website, and you can buy them at Amazon. Yes, the money will be used to help me do this, or to help my friends in, in Israel, or our teaching groups in Philippines and East Africa. I'm not getting rich from this. Hell, no way. So don't think that. But if you want to help us support the work, I would appreciate a donation. And if you do donate, you get all my PDFs for free. I don't care how much you donate. $20, $10, $200, it doesn't matter. You get them all for free. The 10 Days of Awe is a book I just released. So it's telling you about the 10 years that are coming. And in those 10 years are the seven trumpets. And those seven trumpets are part of the one trumpet per year during the next sabbatical cycle. This next sabbatical cycle, starting in Aviv 2024, is the one where the famine is going to be the main topic of the news. We've gone from 80 million in 2016 to 345 million in 2022, are on famine roll. And that's going to go to billions starving around the world because of the heat, because of the droughts, because of war. This war that started here is going to spread. The United States has got the, uh, their fleet off the coast of Israel now. They're warning Iran, don't get involved. Ah, they're warning Iran. Why are they warning Iran? Putin is now supporting Iran. And Putin is telling everyone that the Palestinians have a just cause to attack Israel. What? Putin just invaded Ukraine. And he's trying to be the moral high guy here? Come on. That's propaganda. But if Syria comes in with the, the uh, Iranian forces and the United States attacks them, they're attacking Iran. That brings Russia into this equation. Russia is allied with China. The potential here for World War III started with the Ukraine invasion. The Ukraine invasion has depleted the European and the American supplies of ammunition. So there's going to be a lot of uh, talk going on, but unless they start boosting up their armaments, there's going to be trouble here for these nations very soon. I'm no expert. I'm an armchair quarterback. I don't know anything. But what I do know is I know my Torah. That's what I know. And that's what each of you needs to become an expert on. So the books that I've published, The Restoration of All Things Before Messiah Comes, you've got to have Elijah here doing this work. Who is it? What is the work that has to be restored? Where is he doing it? Would you recognize him if you saw him? The abomination that's to be set up. We have been very close to the date. We originally thought it was September 22nd, then we thought it was October 7th, and something happened on October 7th. Is that it? I don't know yet, but there's a huge Buddha statue that was the very first thing to get attacked, other than the missiles being launched from Gaza. So, I don't know. We're going to know maybe in a year or two down the road what happened now. The statue that I was looking, to, looking for to be set up in the place where I believe is the altar, there was a shrine set up there. It was set up on September 4th, before the September 4th. The forms that held it together were stripped on September 8th. And we believed for sure the statue would be put in on September 22nd, but it was not. It was purged, it was cleaned up, it's ready for the statue. 
but it's not been put there. So I don't understand what's going on. If we get the opportunity, we will go back and look. But I don't have that opportunity now because I fled Israel. I'm now in Jordan and I'm making my way back to Canada. So you need to become that voice. Not the voice talking about all your conspiracy stuff. You need to become that voice talking about Isaiah, talking about Ezekiel, talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That voice talking about Leviticus 23, explaining the holy days. That voice explaining the Sabbath, why we need to keep it holy, how you keep it holy. That voice explaining the Shemitah and why we need to keep it. This year is a Shemitah year. Pray that you don't have to flee in the winter or on a Sabbaton. A Sabbaton is a Shemitah year or can be a Shemitah year as well as a High Holy Day. Brethren, you need to pray. Ask Jehovah for forgiveness for being an idiot and the thing that you believed in and the, the false thing that you've fallen through. Ask Jehovah to show you his truth. Ask Jehovah to show you only his truths. To separate them out from the false stuff. Because the, the propaganda, the lies come from Satan. The false religion, the false ideas of what religion is, comes from Satan. It's now time to get ready. Be one of the wise virgins. Know the holy days. Know that when the five foolish went out to buy their oil, it was the Feast of Trumpets. You don't buy oil or anything on the holy day. That Feast of Trumpets, that day and hour no man knows, which is the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Teruah, the day of shouting, when you're supposed to shout with your voice, shout. So now shout. Shout. Use your voice. Shout. Get people back to reading their Bible. Not to follow you or not to follow me. Get them back to reading their Bible. So shout. And get as many people as you can to start obeying Jehovah so that they can be part of the five wise to meet him when he comes. There's an innumerable multitude coming out of this tribulation. Again, we have not entered the tribulation. We're not closer. It's three years away, seven years away. But you can have a reward two or five, whatever, with talents, if you speak up, if you stand up, if you start to shout. Shout. Use your voice. You all got one. Use your voice. If you haven't got a voice, use your fingers. Type it to your friends. Who cares if they call you an idiot? I've been called that all my um, religious life, if you want, since 1981. I don't care no more. Get the calluses, get the, 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 the flint head, forehead. Be the voice. Be the voice for Jehovah. In the book, The Ten Days of Awe, we show you how the time progresses according to the sabbatical cycle and why we're saying 2033. We explain all that. I want to encourage you to get it. Okay? I don't have time to explain it all here. The cup of bitter waters. The, the uh, Sota woman. The woman who's gone astray. The, what that cup means and represents why Jehovah's talking about that cup full of abominations in the book of Revelation. Where does he get that cup from? That cup in the Revelation comes from Genesis. We explain that in the book. The Leviticus 26 curses, starting verse 14, are already happening according to each sabbatical cycle. We've been telling you that since 2005. But they're getting more intense. They're getting bigger and bigger, and they're all getting put into this cup. Then there's the Sota woman and the curses that she has to drink in the bitter waters. The, again, the bitter waters are in this cup. The curses. 
Leviticus 26, I believe the, the last three parts of the seal with the souls underneath the altar, the, the, the stars falling from heaven, those are the rockets. Just look at the rockets being sent up from Gaza, the stars falling from heaven. And a great earthquake. So I'm still watching for some great earthquake to take place. And that's just the sixth seal. And then the seventh seal is silence in heaven for a half hour. The fifth seal, the, the souls underneath the altar, that's the persecution of the saints. The saints are the DNA descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel. Now you're watching the persecution of those saints right now by Hamas and by Hezbollah. But the souls underneath the altar were told to wait, wait until the rest of their number is done. That means the rest of the killing is done. Okay, I gotta wrap this up. You can lose my internet. So it's not just the state of Israel, but it's all 12 tribes. And those 12 tribes are the Anglo-Saxon descendants. We explained that in our back and way, way back when in our 10 tribes video, 10 lost tribes. Get ready. Understand what's going on. This cup, the whole world is going to drink, not just the 12 tribes, but the whole world, because the whole world made a covenant with Jehovah at the Garden of Eden. They made a covenant with Jehovah after Noah came off the ark. The whole world is going to drink this cup that's going to destroy everyone who's guilty, and only those who are not guilty are going to be preserved. And that's the that's what happens to the Sota woman. She gets her stomach, sticks out, it gets distended. That's caused by famine. The fluids in your, your stomach do something and it makes your stomach stick out. The thighs falling off of the Sota woman is famine so that you're just sticking bones or skin and bones. Again, these are the curses of the, the Sota woman. But if you're not guilty of worshiping a false god. If you're not guilty of not obeying God, then nothing's going to happen to you and you will be brought through this. Some of the people who are speaking out will be martyred. That's what Ezekiel's told when he takes the hairs out of the corner of his tallit and throws them into the fire. But understand, that fire is the fire from the altar. That fire is Jehovah. The, never, the fire that's never to go out, that's Jehovah. You can go through that fire with him holding your hand. Same as the uh, three friends of Daniel did. Jehovah is the consuming fire. So, you need to get real with him. You need to start obeying him. You need to start telling your friends. You need to be that voice speaking up. It doesn't matter if you only have 10 people, speak to 10 people. If you got two people, speak to two. If you got a thousand, speak to a thousand. But start speaking Torah. Don't be afraid. The time for being afraid is over. It's going to be scary when the bombs are going off. It's going to be scary when the sirens are going off. Yes, I've experienced that. It does cause you anxiety. You're human. We're all human. Speak up while you can. Be the voice for Jehovah. Let the world know He's coming. Let the world know He's coming. And these curses are from Him. The God of love, the Christian God of love that's never going to hurt anybody, that's a false teaching. Look what Jehovah has done throughout the Old Testament. He does not change. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. Who changed? You did. You walked away from him. You went away from him. Get back with Jehovah. Stop following some church. Stop following some YouTube teacher. Get back to Jehovah. So I don't know where my next broadcast will be from, but I will try and update you. I don't know if I'll get a newsletter out this week. I've been a little bit busy. Um,
Again, I think my 10 Days of Awe book is the book you should all get and start reading it. The Abomination book, yeah, you should start reading it. We were speculating in that book. We didn't know the day. The Restoration of All Things, yeah, you should get it. You should get all three. I don't care what denomination you are. I don't care what you think about me, if I'm trying to sell you a book or not. If you can't afford it, write me a letter. Nobody's been turned away. It's time to obey Jehovah. Bottom line. Those of you that are fighting for the IDF, awesome, I love you. Those of you fighting for Jehovah, I love you. And those of you that are doing both, be brave. Be very brave. Obey Jehovah. Obey Jehovah. Obey and pray. So, from Aqaba, I'm Joe Dumont, at moon.com. Uh, I can't read any of the comments, I'm sorry. I'll take a look at them afterwards. I know that many of you are still asleep. But, get to work. Do your part. Also, before I say goodbye, I want to thank my team uh, who are following my every move. We had my iPhone hooked up to theirs so they could track me and know where I was at every moment. And they helped me to make arrangements to get out of here, or to get out of Israel, and to find the flight schedules to get out of here. Um, thank you. Thank you for your help. There are still people trapped in Israel. They need help. Be that help. The border here at uh, Elat and Aqaba was open as of yesterday, October 10th. I still believe it's open. There was nobody there. It was just me, Watu, no one there. Both sides were very easy to go through. The border at Allenby Bridge is closed and even if it was open that's a very difficult border to get across I found it very very hard last time so the other ones I don't know but this one in Elat is open take bus 444 from the central station come all the way down to Elat get a taxi to take you to the border the border is open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day it may close early on Shabbat on Friday at 3 p.m. fine you can go to the Abram Hostel in Elat and stay there until it opens up again on Sunday if you have to. Get out of harm's way so that you can take your anxiety level down and begin to think rationally again. Get out of harm's way. Again, Joe Dumont said moon.com. I hope to be with you all, wherever you are. And I pray that you get close to him. Shalom. Bye.